Thank you. So to start, um, we are going to see that, in fact, uh, uh, the developing our target and partnerships with uh, Erasmus Plus. In fact, the EU uh, the EU project uh, rely on a strong network of international academic partners. Uh, with which it commits itself over the mid and long term uh, Erasmus Plus at the University of Montpellier. Uh, that's to say that uh, the European project are really at the crossroads of the three pillars of uh, the Erasmus Plus, but also the University of Montpellier, which are feed, protect and care. This is also a crossroad of the European strategy, uh, which wants to be uh, inclusive, digital, and green. So the, the focus and the accent uh, at the university is really uh, put on uh, these three pillars, uh, and it involves uh, also strategic partners as a charm uh, that you have uh, seen yesterday, I think, but also Muse. I don't know if uh, it already had been presented to you, but. Uh, this is uh, Montpellier University of Excellence. And in fact, the goal uh, of all this is to make the European project work through uh, privilege linked uh, with uh, cutting edge universities in uh, mainly northern and southern uh, countries uh, that are in the Muse strategic fields. To continue, uh, we can start uh, these three pillars are really at the heart of the uh, strategy of the University of Montpellier that is shared, in fact, uh, with uh, the national prior priorities, sorry, but also the European ones. In fact, this is um, a connection between the European projects, uh, the, the University of Montpellier with Muse and also Charmy U. Uh, in fact, we are crossing the national and European priorities. And when we submit a project uh, to the Erasmus Plus Agency, we have to tick uh, geographical and also thematical uh, boxes. Uh, then, uh, well, we have a unit uh, that is dedicated to uh, the Erasmus project, uh, the one uh, to which I belong. Uh, the, this uh, European project unit uh, has developed several activities that are, that are aimed at the whole scientific and academic community of the university. Uh, this unit implies, well, the preparation and support of the deposits. That is one of our main activities and activities are in mission, but also to uh, implement information workshops for academics and researchers to get to know the possibilities uh, for them to develop projects with some potential partners uh, in Europe, but also across the world. Um, well, the, the main activity uh, then, when, once the project is submitted and accepted, is the, man the management of this project uh, as a whole, and also internal and external communication. To put it in a nutshell, here um, at our service, uh, we have 20 um, Erasmus uh, Plus projects uh, that belongs to uh, Kiation 2. We are eight project managers uh, working on these projects. We, are, uh, we got five uh, projects in coordination. That, that's to say that we are uh, the one uh, responsible uh, of these projects. It represents uh, 5 million euros. And we also have one team uh, for project design. Uh, in fact, here, the focus um, that I also wanted to, to do is that um, our unit operates on its own phones, uh, which means that uh, there is a direct interest on uh, the project setup uh, and development. Then uh, I wanted to, to show you um, all the internal environment, uh, just for you to notice that uh, everything is like uh, connected, in fact. We're at the core of uh, this connection, 
and we work closely with uh, the, pre the presidency that is um, drawing our inter international strategy. Uh, also, <coughs> I'm sorry, uh, working closely with Muse and Xiaomi U priorities, uh, which are related to, for, for sure, the international strategy. Then the, the presidency interacts uh, with uh, the international department in which uh, the project unit uh, is situated. And all this is, is in relation with the faculty's uh, research unit, but also the private sector, because we have expectations uh, that are coming from some of the sectors, but we are also, in fact, in a close relation with the National Agency and also the EACA. We also work closely with uh, the communication uh, department and also the local authorities that are here also to um, present our opportunities and uh, strategy um, for potential partnerships with some regions or sectors also. And then last but not least, we get our uh, international partners with who uh, we design uh, this project that are in line with uh, all that I just said. Then, <coughs> sorry. Um, on this slide, I wanted to, to put an accent to highlight uh, the fact that, in fact, um, we are, uh, no, I wanted to focus the importance of uh, building strong and fruitful uh, relationships with partners. In fact, the bilateral relations that we build, for example, for mobility projects, that are just, just if I can say this, uh, sending students and receiving students from others. Um, in fact, we start from here and build a strong relation and that can then implies imply sorry a cooperation project or a capacity building for higher education project and this can drive us to the construction the building of european universities just as charmy you in fact a good relationship uh, with a partner implies a common strategy that is going to be developed throughout uh, the years and the project that can lead us to build uh, something just as an alliance, uh, university alliance, just as Charmy. Then, um, just wanted to present you our uh, Erasmus Plus uh, projects that uh, are in, co in coordination. In fact, we get two partnerships projects in Europe. Uh, there are Unieco, I don't know if you heard about this, and also Purpose. Uh, we got two with uh, Algeria, and then we mainly focus on West Africa, South Africa, and Southeast Asia. Then um, I want to uh, let you know the, what are the steps uh, for building an Erasmus Plus project. Once the project is identified, you have to build a transnational project team. Uh, in fact, we all have to uh, do a reflection, <coughs> sorry, there's a mistake, a reflection on the previous uh, projects. Uh, that's to say to identify what has worked and what did not work um, and try to well improve uh, the, the management thing, the, 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 the people that are involved, the sectors also, and even the partners sometimes. Uh, for example, um, we uh, submitted a project uh, three years ago uh, that we are uh, in coordination. Uh, I've talked about this a minute before. This is uh, the purpose project. And in fact, at the beginning, we were four universities um, involved in the project. And um, well, uh, we have to face some uh, difficulties and one of the university just left. So this is something that 
we want not uh, to happen again uh, because we uh, were like cut uh, in the in the development of the project. And uh, in fact, this is uh, a story of uh, learning from your mistakes. And so we have to consider uh, this uh, when building a transnational project team. Then we have also to uh, consider the skills of all team members, as well as the resources that are available within the participating organization. As I was uh, saying before, we work uh, and we, we are run on uh, our own funds. Uh, this is why this is very important um, to be involved in um, many projects, just, just to to be able, in fact, to have the human resources uh, to work on this project. Then uh, you'll have to select uh, trustful partners uh, that you can be sure that they will be involved during the long run of the project, not just in the beginning and not just for, uh, for the expectation of uh, some, some institutions, but throughout uh, the, the conduct of the project. And uh, also you have to consider uh, that the approach uh, should be driven by the needs of the project and that what uh, worked in one project may not work uh, in another one. And uh, as a conclusion for, for this first step, uh, I would like to say that uh, finally, the relationship building is key for the success of a project and that um, the COVID-19 um make even uh made even more important is that uh, a transnational team has a limited face-to-face -face contact and that um we should uh take into account and think into consideration that working virtually has to be um the core of our work uh that was emphasized by uh the COVID-19 but it always had, uh, has been like this and uh, this is something really important when uh, you uh, submit a project uh, to, to know, to get to know that uh, you are going to be all uh, the time uh, on virtual meeting and uh, a lot of email exchanges to, um, the, to assure, in fact, the, the, the good conduct of the project. Then um, the second step, is to uh, build an efficient decision-making plan. Um, and uh, this implies uh, to brainstorm, in fact, because many aspects uh, addressed within project management require cooperation and com communication within the project consortium. consortium. Um, in fact, the key areas of decision-making making, sorry, are, um, first of all, the allocation of roles and uh, responsibilities in each work package. Um, because uh, this is something that is going to be, um, um, well, the same uh, throughout uh, the, the lens of the project. And so this is really important to uh, know who uh, is taking care of uh, which uh, subject and which aspect of the of the project? This has to be defined before, way before you submit the project, and this has to be uh, mainly respected. Then we have to uh, manage and develop um, project tools that are going to help us to uh, well. Uh, develop the, the project and uh, to, well, um, meet uh, the expectations of uh, the, the Erasmus Plus agency. That's to say that you have to uh, prepare, uh, well, I was uh, going to talk about this, but you have to prepare and review timelines to respect uh, the deliverables, uh, to respect the meetings, to, uh, well, be real strict, um, in managing uh, the, the project. Then um, there are actions that, are, um, that need to be done to be taken to achieve the outputs of the project, uh, which is going to be the, the results of the project and finally the goal of it. Then uh, you'll have to uh, 
define uh, the different committees of uh, the people that are going to um, make part of the project management team, for example, the quality board, in another time to, to assure the, the, the good conduct of the project. Then uh, I already talked about the, the reviewing timeline and also um, what is uh, most important to, to take into account is the resource allocation. Let's say who is going to be able to work on this project and for how long. And uh, this is again, um, need to be uh, defined before submitting the, the project and before, to, before applying for it. Um, I just wanted to come back on uh, the, the slide uh, that, I, that we were before um, to say that when we build um, a transnational project team and a, a project, in fact, uh, when we brainstorm it, we have also to uh, take into account that some institutions are focused, uh, for example, on research and that some other are focused on um, their, their technical focus, in fact. And all the, the tricky part is to uh, find a balance uh, that can allow each uh, institution to meet uh, their expectations. And that's, in fact, all this work of our brainstorming and meeting expectations that is going to um, assure the, the, the good development and the good setup of, of the project. I believe this is the last, oh no. Then um, the third step of, um, the, of building a, a European project is the quality management of this project. In fact, uh, we get four key aspects of quality management. The first one, is that uh, quality management is not only about reviewing uh, and uh, reading uh, each, um, each activity of uh, the project. It is also about being proactive, preemptive, and working uh, to limit uh, the risks. Uh, when I talk about risks, risks um, for example, COVID-19 is the major risk uh, that we have to face uh, for for the last years, but uh, also, uh, for example, the turnover of uh, people working in the project. Uh, this is something that the quality management management team has to take into account and has to find solution, a quick solution, to not um, well uh, risk the the good implementation of the project. Then. Uh, something that is key also and that I repeated uh, various time is that it should be ongoing throughout the project to in fact limit uh, again these risks. Um, in addition uh, to receiving feedback uh, from others uh, including external stakeholders um, it also involves self-reflections uh, self-reflection so as I was saying um, this is um, uh, the, the sorry. The focus is made on uh, not repeating the mistakes uh, that could have been done uh, in the past. And then um, I would like to focus that um, this is a learning process, and that uh, it should result in your review and ad adaptation if necessary. In fact, when uh, you're all launching yourself in a, in a European project. Uh, this is because uh, this is something that you think that should be done or improved or something totally new. And for sure, you cannot learn from something that is new. So, uh, so many times it takes um, uh, many uh, aspects into account that need to be adapted throughout the project. Sometimes you uh, submit the project uh, in a strict way and you see you you yeah you see that uh, this cannot work like this. So you need to adapt everything uh, in order in fact uh, another time to uh, assure the good result of the project which is 
uh, the goal that you, you have to keep in mind throughout uh, the development of the project. And also, I wanted to stress out that not all conflict is bad. Sometimes you will uh, have to face some uh, differences in point of view, some differences in um, the way uh, that we think that should be uh, that things should be done, everything. And in fact, it can be perceived uh, as a conflict, but it's uh, much more an opportunity to uh, discuss uh, and validate the decisions made and uh, mainly to identify the weaknesses within the project and now uh, at this time to adapt it. I think I'm done. Well, thank you for, for your participation. And if you have questions, uh, I'll be happy to, to answer.